Hello and welcome to the last section of the angles part of our geometry course. Here we are going to look at parallel lines and we're going to look at the extra relationships between angles we get when we get parallel lines within a network of lines. So what are parallel lines? Well, quite simply, you have parallel lines if you have more than one line that if you extend those lines in either direction, they will never meet. So remember, this is planar geometry. We're looking at a flat plane and we're saying if we have two lines, when you extend them either way, they will never cross each other. In this situation, we say we have parallel lines. The notation we use for parallel lines is between two letters that represent lines, so say lowercase a and lowercase b, we put two tightly together lines, often just slightly at a diagonal. Sometimes perfectly vertical, but often just slightly at a diagonal. We write a is parallel to b. On a diagram, the notation that we use for parallel lines is we put a little arrowhead on either of our parallel lines. So if we ever see arrowheads on lines, that means that those lines are parallel. And if we have more than one set of parallel lines, so our first set we might have one arrowhead, on the second set we could have two arrowhead to show that uh, both sets are parallel, but they're not parallel with each other. Now, at this point, we want to explain a basic concept about how geometry works. With any geometrical theory, we have to start with things that we assume to be true. And right back from the times of Euclid, Geometers have always started by saying, this is what I assume to be true, and from that they derive new things that they know to be true. What that means is we can't derive everything, we have to start somewhere. And with geometrical systems, it's not fixed where you start. You could start at one point and derive the other thing, or you could start at another point and derive the first thing. So... You may see here things specified as axioms or postulates. That means things that are assumed to be true. And in another geometry course, you could see those derived as theory. But that will mean that in those other geometry course, they've assumed other postulates or axioms that we will derive as theory. The, what's seen as the best choice of axioms or postulates are the most simple and the fewer the better. So having said that, we're going to start with the postulate that we call the corresponding angle postulate. Now, what this says is that if you have corresponding angles, they are congruent or equal. So what is a corresponding angle? We often give it the nickname an F angle. So if we consider on this diagram the angles B, H, F and D, G, F, both marked with a dot, they are congruent. So this is a postulate. We're not going to prove it. However, we'd like to appeal to the fact that we think this postulate is reasonable. And what you can imagine is sliding these lines A, B and C, D. If you imagine sliding them towards each other, maybe that can help to see that the angle stays the same and that these two angles, B, H, F and D, G, F are always the same. Like I say, it's not a proof, it's just an appeal to intuition. And similarly, by the same corresponding angle postulate, angles B, H, E and D, G, E are also congruent. Now, once we've got this postulate, and this is how geometry works, we can then derive theory using it. But all our theory are going to be derived just using this postulate and using what we already know, that a straight angle, or angles that sum to a straight angle, is 180 degrees. And so the theory we're going to derive here, we're going to derive two theory and we're going to leave one theorem for you to dis derive in the exercises. The two theory we're going to derive are the interior angles theorem and the alternate angles theorem. And as an exercise, we're going to ask you to derive the exterior angles theorem. So here we're going to derive the interior angles theorem. So first of all, what are interior angles? Well, if we look at the diagram here, B, H, E and D, G, F, they're considered interior angles because they're within the parallel lines. And we're going to find out what's the sum of these two interior angles, B, H, E and D, G, F. So let's follow step by step through our proof. First of all, we know that B, H, E 
and BHF add to 180 degrees because they're on a straight line. So BHE plus BHF equals 180 degrees. Now we also know that BHF and DGF are congruent, they're equal because they are corresponding angles. So BHF equals DGF. So if we rewrite our first equation, our BHE plus BHF equals 180 degrees, if we rewrite that to put BHF on the left-hand side so that we have BHF on the left-hand side of both our equations, we will write it as BHF equals 180 minus BHE. So we have BHF equals DGF and BHF equals 180 minus BHE. Now by what we call transitivity of equality, which is a, a fancy sounding way to say that if A is equal to B and A is equal to C, then B is equal to C. By that, we now know that DGF is equal to 180 minus BHE. Now, of course, what we were interested in was DGF plus BHE. So we just need to add BHE to both sides of our equation. And that's the interior angles theorem, that BHE plus DGF, the two interior angles, sum to 180 degrees. OK, next we're going to look at what are called alternate angles, sometimes given the nickname Z angles. There's several pairs of alternate angles in our diagram, but one example would be BHE and CGF. I think you can see how it makes a kind of Z shape. So if we first use our interior angle theory that we've just proven, we know that AHE plus CGF equals 180 degrees. And then using the properties of a straight angle, we also know that AHE plus BHE equals 180 degrees. And now we can apply transitivity. We, the fact that if A is equal to B and A is equal to C, then B is equal to C. So by transitivity, AHE plus CGF equals AHE plus BHE. And then we simply need to subtract AHE from both sides to leave us with our result that CGF equals BHE. So in summary, the Z angle, the alternate angles are congruent, they're always equal. So in summary of our three theory, well, sorry, our, our one postulate and our two theory, corresponding angles, angles that can make it an F shape, albeit maybe a reflected F or an upside down F, are congruent. Interior angles sum to 180 degrees and alternate angles that make a Z shape they're also congruent. Now, the impact of this theory is that we only need to know one angle in this kind of diagram and we can find out all of the other angles. OK, so let's demonstrate that on the diagram here. So we have BHF is equal to 20 degrees. So let's consider all of our other angles one by one. First of all, BHE. Now, this makes a straight angle with BHF, so 20 plus this must equal 180 degrees, so BHE must be 160 degrees. Now DGF is corresponding to BHF, so it's congruent, so DGF is 20 degrees. DGE is corresponding to BHE, so DGE is congruent with BHE, so DGE is also 160 degrees. CGE makes a straight angle with DGE, so CGE must be 180 minus 160, so it must be 20 degrees. CGF makes a straight angle with CGE, so it must be 160 degrees. AHE is an interior angle with CGF, so AHE must be 20 degrees, and AHF is a straight angle with AHE, which is 160 degrees. We could have applied the theory in a different order, but I think you can see it's straightforward if we know one angle to find all of the angles. OK, so we're given a diagram and we're asked to find theta. 
um, we can see two theta and theta here, and we need to look at the relationships between the angles to find a relationship between the theta, the unknown angle, and the numbers that are on the, on the diagram. So because we're going to be adding bits to the diagram, let's redraw the diagram with just the bits we, we're interested in. Now, first of all, we notice on the left here, we've got a pair of interior angles. 120 plus this angle BAD must add to give 180 degrees, which means that BAD must necessarily be 60 degrees. Now, we've got another set of interior angles with ADC, but we've got this unknown angle here. But what we notice, this unknown angle is on a straight angle. And we know the other angles of the straight angle, 90 degrees and theta. Now we know our straight angle adds up to 180 degrees. So if we have, here we have 90 and theta, so we're going to say theta plus 90, which is the total angles there. This straight angle adds up to 180, so we can say that this part of the straight angle is 180 minus the bit at the bottom. So 180 minus theta plus 90. Now I think we can see, in addition to our two theta there, we now do know the full angle ADC because we know that that's 2 theta. So we can use interior angles on this angle ADC with the angle DAB to give us our equation that 60 plus 180 minus the theta plus 90 is equal to 180 degrees. And now we just need to solve this equation for theta. So this isn't an algebra course, it's a geometry course, and it's a fairly straightforward equation. If you're, if you're not comfortable solving equations, do look in one of the, the algebra courses. But basically, we add and subtract things from both sides until we have theta all on its own. We say we make theta the subject of the equation. So here, if we gather our numbers together, we have 60 plus 180 minus 90, which gives us 150. And we gather our thetas together, we have minus theta plus 2 theta is theta. And so then we just need to subtract 150 from both sides and we get our final answer, theta equals 30 degrees. So in this second example, we look at our diagram. Now we can't immediately apply our rules. We could use our straight angle to get a 30 degrees there or to get 180 minus theta there, but we're still missing some information. So we're going to use a crafty technique here that we often use in all different walks of mathematics. So I recommend that you take notice of the technique and consider other situations where it can apply. The technique we're going to use is we're going to add an additional line. It's often helpful in geometry to add a line that we're not given because it creates new relationships for us. So we're, we're assuming these two lines are parallel. We should have arrowheads marked on the diagram there. But this additional line gives us interior angles because 150 plus this angle gives us 180 degrees, so that angle must be 30. And then alternate angles gives us a theta there. And then we can straightforwardly say that theta plus 30 is equal to 90 degrees. So theta equals 60 degrees. I repeat, there should be arrowheads marked on the diagram. We're assuming here that these are parallel lines. Well, that's it for the first part of our geometry course on angles. Don't worry if you're an angle lover because angles will return in when we look at triangles, when we look at polygons, when we look at circles, but they'll return specifically to those things we're looking at. So we decided to include angles within those sections. We're going to leave you, as always, with, with a, some exercises at the end. Now, in order that we don't start the triangles course with answers to exercises, in case people start fresh at the triangles course, we're going to give the answers to these angles questions at the end of the first videos on triangles. So watch the first video on triangles the way through and you'll find those answers at the end there. Hope you've enjoyed the course. As always, any suggestions, any comments, any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment box below. If you're enjoying the channel, please subscribe to the channel and then you'll be informed of other videos that might be of interest to you. Uh, we, if you're jumping in just in this video, we recommend you watch the angles from the beginning in this complete geometry course. Thanks for your attention. See you in the next video.